Hello everyone, we're here with Professor Susan Murrow to talk about her work that's in the EOU Art Faculty Exhibition. So Susan, um, to get started here, um, I've always noticed about your work, they always seem to me very kind of like passageways or nebulous or about space, especially the installations. And there's a part of that aspect to these newer paintings that are behind you right now. But I also noticed that there are, I'm gonna zoom in here a minute here, these sure. kind of wall aspects too that kind of kind of thwart that idea of passageway a little bit. And I'm wondering mm -hmm. if you could talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, well, a couple summers ago, I went to a science conference where the keynote speakers were actually talking about the, um, uh, the decommissioning of the Klamath River dams. So there are four dams on the Klamath River which are being decommissioned. Um, it's the largest reclamation project in the world ever. So a huge historical kind of context. Um, and talking a, a lot of that when I was there, you know, the conversation was more about ecology and, and the environment in general, but also um, the economies around the uh, riverways that had been dammed up and perhaps even um, how a lot of the river systems were ill in some way. So I thought that was kind of historic. And, and of course, in the middle of that, I was hearing a lot of political it was about, all about building the border wall and things like that. So um, the, the southern border wall, which I'm from Las Cruces, New Mexico. So uh, the southern, you know, that southern border in the, is just a half an hour drive away from where I grew up. And all, I see how all those communities interact with one another and people have cousins that live on the other side. Um, People without health insurance in the U.S. or have a dentist that lives in Juarez. So it was a very mixed community back then. Anyway, um, that idea of the wall and dams and segmenting areas. So I, I feel like in my work, one thing that I'm really interested in is playing with space and the aerial view. Um, but pushing and pulling space too, back and forth, uh, I feel like things come on one time you can see it as a landmass, another time it can feel like a waterway. So I was playing with that a bit, and it struck me that, um, you know, there's times when I go on hikes, or I'm in the desert, and I find a piece of metal, somebody's trash from an old campfire, and it's almost so um, destroyed that it becomes de this delicate detritus of um, something that almost looks like it belongs there. It, it becomes something that looks like it's uh, geologic um, in some way. So I was playing with that idea of divisions, um, but also not wanting them to feel totally ominous. So sometimes making them a little bit, um, I don't know, sparkly mm -hmm. <laughs> and decorative in some ways. Um, okay. Other times really, you know, uh, holding something back in one area um, and then also at times breakthroughs um, because I'm always just thinking about the porous nature of culture and, and our environment. I feel like um, we always, uh, we tend to have uh, a motivation to make things very, um, to control and subdue uh, our environment and it's usually kind of futile in some way, at least in the long term it seems that way. Well, you mentioned water, and it seems very important in both conceptually with your work too, but it's also obviously the the methodology, the materials that you use to make the work, it, they're very fluid in that too. Water is obviously an important part of that. Can you talk about maybe the relationship between the the media and the, the conceptual aspect of the work? Yeah, um, I always, Throughout the years, I get very excited when I find these moments where whatever material I am to use and I, uh, to get an idea across, there seems to be some symbiotic relationship between the two. And um, right now, these are paintings on a polymer paper, and I'm actually doing a watercolor pour. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's kind of like, 
um, watching a mud puddle dry in your driveway where, of course, paint, paint is a pigment that has different weights. It's literally particles that are suspended in water, and as they drop down, they drop at different rates. So a lot of the delicate, really amazing line work that happens um, is a spontaneous process in and of itself. So it makes sense to me that if I'm talking about um, things like our current climate crisis, and, um, but also just um, geologic forces and um, moving land mass and material around, that in, in some way my process is actually mirroring that. So I'm pouring watercolor in these big pools on the floor and then letting them dry over time and, and the watercolor, some of them that are say inorganic pigments are staining pigments and they float to the top and then the organic pigments like the ones that are actually dug out of the ground like your ochres and uh, raw sienna and things like that drop they're heavier so um, there becomes this nice separation between the two okay. do you want to talk a little bit about so these are standalone paintings that we're looking at right now but you also work in installation if we want to want to walk sure. over to this um, do you want to talk a little bit about how you see the two kind of complementing one another or or do you see are you moving away from installation to painting or is it uh, I see completely them as complementary practices um, and I think there's a, a certain amount of practicality in the studio where um, when I'm working through an idea and trying to visualize um, how something might come together, what kind of imagery I'm using, um, I usually start out on singular pieces. It's a way to brainstorm and work through uh, relationships. Um, and that's where this kind of wall um, came out of. I was thinking about these paintings as trying to work through some of that imagery. Um, and the installations to me, um, I think when I feel a little bit more confident in terms of what I'm doing and want to, and know what I want to see or achieve, um, in terms of practicality, it's hard because I don't have, you know, to have a space this big to set it up. Um, so a lot of times I don't quite know what it's going to look like until I have an exhibition space to put things together. Um, but I feel like with the installations, um, I enjoy that it creates more of a discovery process for the viewer. It's kind of a time-based art viewing experience in a way, how people see it, approach it. I think this is true for all art to some extent, but I think the scale in and of itself makes people navigate through it and discover different moments and, and relationships. Um, so, uh, especially how with these panel pieces, uh, if you notice, there's a shift in color, even in the blue color. So I'm not wanting it to all, I mean, I, I, I do know how to match this blue color <laughs> to this mm -hmm. if I wanted to, but um, I like the, the little shifts that happen between. To me, it's, it's um, speaking to different um, different times of day or patternization or um, pixelated images or maybe um, different little windows to um, like an aerial uh, Google map, you know, a different, a different weather pattern or something. So these little discordant moments where things match up but are kind of different and you're not sure how or why they changed. Um, this piece is called Tipping Point. And I, I was kind of thinking about it as that moment when, when the wheels come off. <laughs> There's still a lot, I think, of beauty and harmony with the, the shape itself um, and that hard contrast in value between the deep blue-black and the watercolor areas and the, and the sand, the colored areas, um, create, you know, they kind of come together and become an image but there's a lot of things that don't match up. So I like that a little bit of confusion. And to me, again, thinking about the viewer and how they might experience it, and then also what I'm trying to get across is um, giving people that moment of, of a feeling of an imbalance, uh, of discontinuity, 
of um, trying to make things match up, trying to make sense of what's happening from one area to another. Because um, I feel like, especially um, with how, how our environment is changing at the moment, I feel like that's a, a place that we are as a culture right now, trying to figure out what's the new normal <laughs> or how quickly that will you know, change from even what we've experienced in these last few years in the next decade or two. Well, on that kind of note then, to kind of uh, wrap up here, is there anything you want to talk about in relationship to where you see your work kind of going from here? Or Oh, um, sure. So um, I'm working on a larger uh, piece that's very much based off of these paintings and this uh, installation, the tipping point drawing. Um, and it's called If Water Has Its Way. Um, and the title was taken from an Anthony Dewar book uh, um, about grace. And in it, he talks about uh, water kind of having a sense of agency and scouring. If water had its way, it would scour the globe and we'd all be standing in um, three feet of, of mud. Um, so this thinking about whether or not water, water has a sense of agency has left, let me also think about um, human nature and how we interact with the natural world and whether or not we are kind of inherently um, always uh, in our sense of control or these old ideas about manifest destiny and colonization, always trying to extract resources from the environment or um, if we'll ever be able to kind of calm down and come into the um, the understanding that we have an abundant um, natural setting to take care of us if we would just stop harming it in some way. So, um, so yeah, this is this is growing, um, and a lot of the there's a lot more waterways and kind of snaky, sinewy rivers uh, that move around the gallery. Um, and then I'm also playing with some soft sculpture to make walls which I don't know if that'll happen for this next piece or not, but um, I've al always enjoyed um, soft sculpture. They're just these cloth bricks I'm trying to make to make into kind of a wall uh, to show kind of a destroyed architecture in the, in the middle of the gallery. Um, soft sculpture to me, it always kind of captures that sense of futility, you know, when it's, when it's something that's supposed to be hard and utilitarian and then it's, um, and then it's, yeah, squishy and soft. So anyway, All right. that's where I'm working on. Exciting. Yeah, thank you. All right, thank you very much. Thanks, Corey.